Yes, ma'am. Um, first of all, uh, I appreciate the interest from the media. It helps us to get uh, a happy ending to a very sad and tragic situation out to the public and kind of explain a little bit about how we did it. Um, and so, um, updates this morning. Uh, went to the prayer breakfast this morning at the Galleria. Walking in, it hit me that uh, none of our officers were killed last night. None of our officers were ambushed from the woods. And uh, so I said a prayer of thanks to God for protecting our officers out there last night and uh, the officers in Atlanta and all, uh, all the other agencies that were working with us. Uh, honestly, I slept for three and a half hours and I went directly to the uh, prayer breakfast and uh, I have not been actually at work. Uh, so I know that uh, Sergeant Depp was arranging this, so I don't have any significant updates from last night. I did review, uh, I visited with the Violent Crime Bureau who uh, were the uh, main unit to take him into custody. But there were also other units there, uh, other patrol units uh, and other uh, special units. But the unit that actually confronted him originally was a plainclothes uh, VCB officer, Violent Crime Bureau officer. And uh, he confronted the individual and was then backed up by other officers who arrived shortly thereafter. I watched the body cam last night and was very proud of the professionalism demonstrated and uh, the lack of judgment and retaliation. They did their jobs. Uh, there was no resistance and he was taken in custody with absolutely no violence and was treated professionally. Can you sort of describe the uh, the person who didn't have on a uniform? How did he speak to him or approach him initially? Um, first of all, I, the tactics of what happened yesterday are precise and purposeful. The approach, though, was the same approach as he is taught as if he's a uniform officer. He, uh, he is trained in how to work with an individual, a citizen, when they're in plain closed capacity because that can be dangerous for a police officer and that can be dangerous for a citizen because markings, uh, personal protective equipment, uh, and so forth uh, are part of that training. And so, of course, he, he was marked and, and, uh, and protected when he confronted the individual and he just gave him verbal commands and the individual was a pretty good distance away and so it took a, a little while to get him into custody but it was a slow methodical safe approach verbal commands and then took him into physical custody uh, maybe i don't know a couple of minutes probably two minutes maybe two and a half minutes worth of verbal commands so is it like hey buddy i'm here to help no ma'am can you talk about the part that technology played in this capture i mean right now we're here inside the real-time crime center can you talk a little bit about what part this all played, what part maybe block cameras played into capturing this uh, this uh, uh, suspected shooter? Let me, let, me, let me give a little bit more holistic answer and then I'll, I'll go there. Um, Ma'am, we were there to help him. Uh, however, it was verbal commands. The physical description was pretty exact. And so it was verbal commands, citizen safety, officer safety, and, and suspect safety it was not much else. Uh, it was covering concealment and uh, it was a dangerous apprehension uh, and it was not uh, anything other than that. And he was very clear and so were the police. So it was pretty direct, very professional, but no ma'am, it was not uh, a consensual encounter, if you will. He was being detained and we were very clear on our, our so commands. So he complied, he dropped his weapon? Uh, I'm not going to get into that because what I have to be careful of today is not to bleed into the criminal case in Atlanta. So anything specific that may or may not affect that case and a fair trial for him, and that fair trial also extends to the victims because we don't want something overturned because I have made a mistake and given out information that should not be out there. So for this moment, 
uh, I'm going to hold on that information about specifics about the weapon. Can you just say whether he was armed when you when your officer saw him? He was armed. Yes, ma'am. The question was about the part that technology played in the capture, uh, specifically this center and flock cameras. I love the question. Technology played zero part in it. It was people who made the technology and then people who used the technology. We act like technology is a thing. It's not a thing. It's something that somebody thought of in their head and decided that they wanted to dedicate their life to building something that would help us capture people that do bad things to other humans. And so I love the question because I do love technology and it helps us do our job. It, it helps us make our citizens safer. And the technology that was built by humans um, was paramount in this case. And I don't think we fully appreciate some of the technology that we have had at our fingertips for the last very few years. This is very, very recent, and it's all local, homegrown, right here in Atlanta, that is changing policing across America. Um, but the first, the first thing I want to talk about is how sometimes we get a lot of resistance to technology and police work. We mean good for people. And sometimes we have to fight for years to get over the hump with what we believe is very, very helpful technology. And we just had to do it. You guys just came and did a pretty big press conference here about facial recognition. We are very transparent with our community and we embrace technology and we also reject technology. Um, and we're very careful with it, but we're also very, um, inclusive with our community and make sure that the technology that we're using is okay with them. But usually when they hear us, um, in fact, we just did a community meeting a few weeks ago and we talked about facial recognition and after they heard what we've been doing with it, what our policy is, over 90% approval rating. There was over 90% approval rating for the Real-Time Crime Center and for license plate recognition. So to answer your question uh, specifically, uh, we got the first indication that he was in Cobb County was from a flock license plate recognition camera, which was located um, in the Smyrna area, in fact, inside the city of Smyrna. And so we began to search the area of that, that flock hit. And those flock alerts come into this center, the real-time crime center, but they also come into our officers' MDCs. Um, we found that not from an alert, but we found it through a search, as I understand it, um, and we're able to go backwards and say he was here at this specific time. Uh, don't mark my word on this, but that was a little bit afternoon, probably around 1230 or so. Um, and so then we began to, to look, look in the area for the suspect and the, uh, the vehicle that we were looking for, and eventually we located that in the, in the battery. So the flock camera was the first indication that put him somewhere and that is a very new technology from a very young company right here in Atlanta Georgia Tech graduates truly 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 community policing uh, Marietta Police Department and the Cobb County Police Department um, basically ushered in that technology when it was a very very young company and we worked and and did some studies together in a very uh, a higher crime area in our and, and studied it and and so they partnered with us for free and we partnered with them to see if this would really work and it did and so I, I, last night I referred to where four years ago where would we have been four years ago we would not have had a flock hit to tell us that he was in Cobb County that's the first thing um, so we got that and then most of the rest of the magic, although there is a lot of things happening in the field with creative police officers, uh, there are a lot of things happening in these offices with creative uh, crime analysts and there were a lot of creative things happening at the state level with the GBI, uh, with Atlanta police of course. So there's a lot of other technology that I won't really mention that is really just going on a mile a minute. But here in our real-time crime center, which is also a local company called Fusus, it's in Atlanta, 
I do not get paid one dime from these companies. I believe in these companies and the people that do them. And so I promote them because they do good work and we are able to do good work with their, with their help. But our real-time crime center, um, which I have been envious of from other departments, New York City, Atlanta, for many years, uh, Fusis made it affordable and Fusis made it very, very easy. And so, as y'all know already, we've had this center up up and running since uh, probably a year and a half or so. And one of the things we were able to get in here were DOT cameras. That took that took some work, uh, and DOT was, uh, uh, our, our department head here uh, was very cooperative. We've got the 911 calls are, are now coming in here. We're able to review those. Those two things were paramount last night. Those two things were, um, well, the first, the second clue was seeing him, the suspect, on the DOT cameras. We, we, it, it was, we were certain it was him, and we actually saw him go into a building uh, that was being built in, not inside the battery, but just outside the battery, right across from Truist Park. Though that building was unoccupied because it was still under construction, so that's the last place we saw him. But because it was the last place, we also knew that there was a likelihood that he did not get out of a certain area in our minds. So we felt like we, if he did not leave in a car, then we probably had a pretty good printer. Back to flock license plate recognition, we were able to put in uh, searches for tags that may have been associated with this individual to see if he came inside that perimeter and came out. So we were able to do a lot of background work using of the DOT cameras a lot and the flock system and we were a few hours behind him but we could tell basically uh, a lot about where he might might be and uh, so the final piece of technology that was instrumental and this is after hours of searching was the integration of our CAD data from our 911 center and we had a tactical dispatcher from our 911 center in this room with us last night. And we had our operators that you see here today. And as those many, many, many calls were coming in uh, from citizens, our great community who was calling us, we of course would dispatch folks to those and people are very concerned. So they're calling about a lot of different people. So we had a lot of interactions. We had a young lady who's in this room right now who saw, read one of the CAD dispatches, and to her, it felt like this might be him. We need to prioritize this call. And uh, so she spoke to the 911, the tactical 911 operator, and we got that information to the field. And uh, that's when our Violent Crime Bureau, who I was speaking about a minute ago, were able to go in and, and, uh, and, and locate this individual and take him into custody. So those three things, Flock LPR, Fusis Real-Time Crime Center, and the, uh, the DOT cameras, and the CAD integration, those four things were very instrumental uh, last night for us in Cobb County. Chief, uh, for those that push back on Flock cameras and the idea of Big Brother watching you. Yes. What is your response? And you talked about how it was effective in the apprehension of this suspect here in Cobb County. So explain, if you will, why you feel like this is such a necessary tool and why, even though some push back on the idea of Big Brother watching, it's an important tool to have. Well, first of all, I would like to say this, that when we actually engage people who are, you know, somewhat against that, those technologies, they make us stronger and better. And we seek to engage them. We have public meetings inviting people to come so they can hear our story and actually help us mold our policies. We learn a lot from those uh, individuals and groups and we intentionally engage them and they help us make our policies better and stronger. And they'll challenge us on great questions. So they are our partners. Um, not the ones that are just not police friendly from the beginning to the end. You know, I'm talking about people that have very, very, very good reservations about this technology because I have them too. 
and I've seen technology I would, do not want to be a part of this uh, police department. So first of all, to them, we're an open, transparent agency that community polices. And part of community policing is looking at new technology because it helps, but the other part is listening to our community and making our policy stronger so that we can't, uh, so that we are less likely to make a mistake. So the message to them, first of all, is we welcome the conversation. We want to make people safe while also protecting people's privacy. That's our goal, and I believe that's their goal as well. So when we have the same goal, pretty much we can get there, and we, we do in Cobb County. Uh, but the necessity of this is, is pretty simple. The suspects that harm us are using technology. We can stay in the 1980s or in the 1990s or in the 2000s and we can be victimized forever or we can look for innovative ways to catch up and then even surpass what they are doing and when we do that effectively and responsibly our citizens are safer and our officers are safer so i think people want us to do that and if you rewind again in time would anybody want us to go back before there were fly cameras? Would anybody want us to go back before there was DNA? Remember? Uh, fingerprints, that was cutting edge at one time, correct? Would we want to go back when there was no fingerprints? Now, the last thing I'll say about technology is this. It is the wave of the future for community policing. When we have technology, when I can get an actual photograph from the Atlanta Police Department of the car with a tag number and the, a photograph of an individual who shot five people, guess what? I detain one. One. I don't pull over every white Tacoma that I see that's occupied by an innocent civilian, many of whom might not have a lot of trust for the police many of whom might be frustrated and angry with the police. But remember, you have a police officer that might think that's somebody that just shot five people. That's a terrible mixture for a good police officer who's trying to do his job to pull somebody over that he believes has committed a heinous crime like that. He's got safety concerns. His hand is probably going to be on his gun or he's going to be doing a felony stop. And the innocent civilian is offended. And if they're already at a heightened state to begin with because they already are somewhat have a bad impression of the police, that is a recipe for disaster uh, because the officer's scared and the individual in the car is angry. So what we like about technology is no longer do we get a white, white passenger car with two male occupants wearing dark clothing. We don't get that anymore. We get I don't know the specifics of this one, but we get, it's a 2016 Tacoma white uh, Georgia tag, 123ABC, uh, male subject, here's his picture, here's his name, here's his date of birth. That was one of the reasons that the specificity of the dispatch that came across that our public safety analyst saw last night, that's one of the reasons that she was convinced that this might be him was because of the specificity of the description given by Atlanta police, which all came from technology. So it's a tool and it's, it's great for our community safety and all responsible police departments are, are utilizing it because they care about what they do for a living. So that would be my message. And do you believe this technology tool may have saved lives? Of course, I, I can guarantee you and I'm going to just have to go back to this. The technology doesn't save lives. <laughs> it's the people that use the technology, the people that built the technology. Because we do have technology that we have spent money on over the years that we don't utilize because it's not very effective. And you probably have technology in some police departments if the want to is not there in the civilian staff and the officers that doesn't go capitalized upon. The people, yes sir, that, that built these systems and the people that used them yesterday, not only in Cobb County, but everywhere, 
Nobody was going home. Nobody. Everywhere. Every agency in this county and around the state were willing to help us. They were doing it all night. It's the people behind the technology. But yes, sir, the combination of the people and the technology, uh, to me, definitely saved lives. Um, what his intent was, I can't say. So was he lying in wait? Would he have done something out of desperation to get away? Who knows? But in my mind, it does appear to me that yes, lives were saved, even if they weren't. When the kids got on the school bus this morning, there was a totally different feeling than there would have been had we not captured this individual last night. Um, would we have had the prayer breakfast this morning at the Galleria had we not captured this individual last night? So I can tell you one thing, the quality of life for our citizens is better. Um, the feeling that the police love us is better. The police care about us is better. Uh, so we probably did save a life. Who knows? It depends on the intent of the individual. But no matter what, uh, we did good. And that's what we, we aim to do. Did it wear you out? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you.